Hello, welcome to KringleCon. Uh, this talk is going to be on machine learning and some use cases of how we can apply that in cybersecurity. Uh, a little bit about me, my name is Chris Davis. I, I work for CounterHack as a senior technical engineer, uh, challenge developer, pen tester. Um, I am GSE number 144, got the OCP and a bunch of other certs. Okay, so what is machine learning? Machine learning is basically uses computer science and statistics to enable computers to learn how to perform a given task dynamically using models created through a process of trial and error or through uh, training it on known good inputs. This is especially useful for when you're trying to create a program to accomplish a given task that has thousands or millions of possible combinations of inputs um, that you can't possibly account for stat by statically typing in you know all the ifs then else logic that would re be required to account for all of those different possible numbers of situations right uh, basically at that point it would become infeasible or too difficult or a pain in the butt to keep that code updated and actually code it in the first place and so in that case we can actually use machine learning train a model and in that model we can plug into our program which can then account for all of those different possible in inputs um, machine learning requires some known good data to more finely tune its learning algorithm and based upon how much of that data we give it, the, uh, it increases its accuracy in being able to predict the, those inputs and what, the, what they are or how to react to a given task. Um, just like we humans also learn through trial and error and the more experience we have with a given topic or situation, the more accurate and the better we become at handling those situations. It's exactly the same or at least fundamentally the same as machine learning. Uh, so some common machine learning flame frameworks that are often used are TensorFlow. It's an open source library. It's very extensive. Um, it's the one that I'm going to be using here in the demo here. Um, it can use CPUs or GPUs. Um, it's very, very robust. Um, it, but typically it uses static computational graphs. Um, another one is PyTorch. It's a little different from TensorFlow because it uses dynamically updated graphs, which is really good if you're trying to create a model and architecture that can m be modified on the fly, basically. Uh, it is a lot simpler than TensorFlow, though it is somewhat more limited. And as a result, it's uh, better for smaller tasks and projects. There's a bunch of other machine learning frameworks out there too, like uh, Azure Machine Learning, which is actually really comprehensive. It's really, really good for businesses and the website's very easy, intuitive to learn and to use. Um, there's a bunch of others like Amazon, Sonic, Keras, MXNet, Gluon, Swift, and even more that I'm not listing. So some common use cases. This is how it's most commonly used in our every for example, speech recognition, you know, everybody has Siri or Alexa or Google Home or, you know, at least a lot of us do, um, you know, facial recognition. So when you open up your Apple iPhone or your iPhone and it sees your face, it recognizes your face and then it unlocks your phone for you. Also, it actually learns over time, too. So as your face changes, maybe you get facial hair, maybe you're wearing glasses now. Um, it can actually pick up on those things and it can uh, learn your face as it goes on. Uh, same way with image, image recognition, a perfect example of that is in uh, social media, right? Maybe a lot, a lot of social media websites, they want to be able to filter out bad images, right? Maybe they don't like firearms or nudity in their content. And so um, it would be painstakingly difficult to hire a bunch of people to, to monitor all those images constantly and to delete them if somebody uploads something bad. But you can at least get rid of most of the, the, the low hanging fruit. Um, using machine learning to pr uh, do image recognition for things like rifles or something like that, or, or, or nudity, right? They could filter that out. Um, it's also commonly used for targeted ads, right? So as you surf the web, as you look for things, it tracks that. Um, it sees your usage, and then it gives you targeted ads. Uh, YouTube also uses machine learning to basically curate your content. So if you look at a video and you watch a video, um, it'll actually say, hey, I think based upon your patterns here, we think you would also like this, right? Um, the spam filtering is also another example of where machine learning can be applied and is applied. So more specifically, we want to talk about cybersecurity use cases, right? Um, so there's some really easy ones that we can point out real quickly, obviously like credit card fraud and detection, identity theft, um, OSINT, um, more specifically, uh, what I'm thinking of is like network-based heuristics, host-based heuristics, log analysis, and incident correlation, right? Using pattern recognition, anomaly detection, and predictive analysis. 
Um, for example, I mean, we as analysts now, right, if you're a blue team analyst, right, you probably know what your network looks like, right? You probably know what normal a baseline network traffic looks like. And if all of a sudden you see something different or outside of that, maybe it's a different protocol being used that shouldn't be used, or maybe it's um, an increased bandwidth because somebody's scanning, right? Those are all things that stick out in your mind. And those are things that you could probably pick up on quickly because you've trained yourself, right? You've trained yourself and you've learned what those kinds of anomalies look like. It's the same way with machine learning. We could train a, a machine learning model to say, hey, this is what normal network looks like. And based upon that, um, if you see an anomaly, report it, right? Or uh, host-based heuristics, right? And that a lot of endpoint protections boast um, machine learning or artificial intelligence, which uh, basically looks at what a normal host baseline or, or traffic looks like and how it changes. And then over time, it learns better. And then eventually it says, hey, there's some anomalous activity going on that doesn't normally happen based upon that, you know, create an alert. Same thing with logs. We could feed it a bunch of bad logs. And based upon that, it could potentially find statistically high variations of abnormal logs that we could be used to, to again, leverage and help an analyst determine what's, what's, what, what bad is or quickly identify bad. Um, and, you know, the same thing with the incident correlation. If you have a uh, incident response reporting framework like the Hive, um, you could correlate, you could feed a machine learning model something like uh, indicators of compromise, like an IP address, or maybe user agent string, or, you know, based upon a, you know, a plethora of incidents that have happened over four or five years. And then based upon that, you could tr train that machine learning model to, to basically predictively come up with things that could be happening or, or that you could use to, to find more evil, basically. Um, it's it's not just for blue team. It's easy to apply machine learning into blue team scenarios just because there's usually so much data available to blue teams, but um, it could also be applied to red teamers too. Um, for example, automating repetitive tasks like scanning and enumeration, right? Um, typically, you know, the way scanning and enumeration is done is we just have a bunch of scripts. We have a bunch of tools. We have Nmap. We have um, burp suite and we just point them at our target and let it just slam the crap out of it right and that's fine i think from a temp pen testing perspective but if you're trying to be um you know smarter about it you could do manual testing but we could also train machine learning especially as it gets more robust in the future to be able to train machine learning to reflexively learn networks learn what bad is um, and intelligently scan things instead of just slamming them right um, so that's something that we could uh, basically automate away um, so that we could focus our energies on other things using machine learning. Um, same thing with e payloads, right? We could uh, have a trained model for executing a, our payload on a, a remote target. For example, maybe we have remote code execution of some by some means, but we don't have, um, but it's blind. We don't have a way to know what's going on. So we can train our payloads ahead of time uh, using machine learning. And then based upon that, we could have it intelligently try to find a, a method of privilege escalation instead of just slamming it with every possible combination of privilege escalation known to man, um, which would probably be picked up by some kind of endpoint protection. Um, again, same thing with network pivoting. Really, the, the possibilities are endless, um, especially as machine learning gets easier to, to, do, to do and um, as it gets more robust. Um, I really think red teamers are going to be able to leverage machine learning to really do some amazing stuff. And I think there there is actually some instances of that happening now. Uh, perfect quick example of a red team uh, machine learning exploits. So CAPTCHAs are those annoying little boxes that pop up and say, hey, prove you're not a robot by telling me what this text is when you're signing up for a website or maybe you're you're um, submitting a form online. You know, they're kind of a pain in the butt and sometimes I can't even as a human tell what they are. Um, but they just help prevent things like spam bots, right? Um, and machine learning actually has been used to defeat these CAPTCHAs and CAPTCHAs have had to get more robust over time as a direct result. Um, you know, thinking of the Google CAPTCHA, for example, is very, very robust and difficult to, to try to beat with something like machine learning, but probably theoretically possible. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to demonstrate our image recognition through machine learning. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to train a machine learning model to identify the difference between apples from bananas and, and PNG files, right? Um, so we're going to be using Python and we're going to be using TensorFlow 1.15. And I have a GitHub repository set up with all of these files. So if you want to try this out yourself, just go to that link. So I'll put that up for just a second. Okay, so let's jump over that repo. I'll just quickly show you what it is. 
Um, so the repository here has a readme, which has basically all the steps you'll need to, to be able to run the code. Um, so we have a few things here. We have the retrain.py. We have the predict images using trained model.py. And then we have two sets of, of data. So we have our training images, which is just a directory with labeled apple and banana directories. And then inside of them is a bunch of images of an apple or bananas and 10 each. So basically what uh, what this retrain.py does right here is it just iterates over this directory and it says, hey, if it's in the apples folder, it's an apple and I'm gonna, I'm gonna train myself on those images. And if it's in the bananas folder, it's a banana and I'm gonna train myself on those images. It's gonna create a trained model and then it's gonna output that to this direct temp directory here. And then it's going to output the labels for all of the different possible combinations of images to uh, a, another file here in the temp directory. Um, and we'll run it using this command. And then finally, we're going to run our predict images using trained model.py to predict what's what these images are here. So I have a folder called unknown images, and it's basically gonna iterate over each of these. And based upon what it had learned previously, it's going to detect if this is an apple or a banana. Okay, so let's jump over to the code real quick. Okay, so here again, we have our code. Um, this, these are actually, these scripts are actually based upon two scripts that TensorFlow themselves put out. Um, you can see that here at the top of the, the, um, the file itself. So I can't take complete credit for this code, um, though I did have to adapt it a good bit to fit the scenario exactly. Um, you can feel free to use this again. As long as you, if you wanna train your own models to do image recognition, you can actually use this um, Get repository. You just have to create directories based upon the type of labels that you want to give those images. Give it known good inputs. Um, you know, cats and dogs, for example, is a, is, is a known example. Um, and then you could train your own model and plug it into any kind of situation you want to use. Um, okay, so we're going to go ahead and run our command here. Let's see here. Let's go and train our images. All right. Okay, so I'm going to train this model based upon that directory, the contents of that directory. And so right now it's training it. Um, and so what it's gonna do is it's gonna iterate over each one of those. And you can actually see here how it's it's actually training itself based upon those images. And it'll, it could actually take a while. It could take up to five, 10 minutes. Um, right now I only have 20 images that it's training on, so it should uh, complete relatively quickly. Um, but if you have a lot more images, right? Like let's say 10 or 12 or 13,000, right? The more you give it, the better, uh, but it could take even longer potentially um, depends on your machine speed and a number of other factors so i'm going to end the video right here and then come right back as soon as this is complete okay so our trained model is complete we now have our files so the uh the trained model and the labels itself are loaded so what this script is going to do is it's going to load that up it's going to uh, load our trained model into a session and then using that session we're going to predict what the contents of the unknown images folder are, right? So we have our images here of a couple apples and a couple bananas. And so what it's gonna do is it's gonna use um, some threading as well too to speed up the process because if we had thousands of images we needed to predict, we wouldn't wanna do one at a time. Um, so based upon those results, it's going to iterate over the results and it's gonna print out what each of those are for us. So let's see if our train model is actually working here. Okay, so it processed all four images and we can see that based upon the training data that we gave it, uh, apple or image number one is an apple and it's 99.9% .9 accuracy. Image number two is also an apple, which it has right here. Image number three is a banana with 100% accuracy and image number four is also a banana with 100% accuracy. So again, that just goes to show you, especially in the example of image recognition, it's incredibly easy to um, quickly identify images and use machine learning to train images. Um, that's one of the more common examples, and this is a very simple example, but you could potentially apply this to, to almost any project that required any kind of image processing. So that's it. I hope you enjoy your holiday hack challenge for KringleCon 2019. Thanks.